hey, there, you, person, there, you. Uh, are you looking to get into turkey hunting with archery equipment? Well, I'm coming at you with four things that you probably want to know if you've never done it before that'll get you in the ballpark of things you need and things to think about for this season. So stick around. Uh, those four things are coming up right about now. So if you've ever deer hunted before, you probably have, with archery equipment I should say, you've probably got a lot of what you already need. You've got the bow, whether that's a compound or a recurve, and I think most states also allow crossbows for turkey hunting. Don't quote me on that, check with your, sta uh, your state on the legal means of take, but you've got your bow, you've got arrows, and you've got broadheads. And that's like your three pieces of equipment for archery hunting that you need to focus on. That's the gear aspect of it. And when we break those down on those three things, here's what I look for in my turkey setup. My bow technically is categorized as a speed bow. It's a Dart Maverick II, um, but right now it's cranked down to 60 pounds where it was 70 pound limbs to make it a little bit quieter, a little easier to draw back when sitting position and with my goal this year of being sitting completely in the open, being able to do it really slow. So that is one thing I'm looking for in a bow. It's not necessarily the speed, because you're gonna be shooting at these turkeys within 30 to 20 yards, and honestly, a turkey's vitals are pretty small, and if you're just getting into this, I would say 20 yards is probably max range for that vital area. So I'm looking for something that has low poundage, that I can draw back easy, and that I can hold back for a long time because these turkeys could be taking their time moving in or they could be coming flying in either or but at least you're prepared to be able to if you're sitting in the open or holding back for a long time with that lower poundage that you'll be able to hold it back and wait for the ethical kill on a turkey short and simple the bow portion side of things low poundage so my arrow setup, second piece of equipment that you're gonna need for a turkey now I've got kids and chickens out here wandering around so mind the noise so you've got the bow, you're trying to go for low poundage for holding things back, and now we're gonna move along to our arrows. In the fall time for my deer, I just naturally, my arrows are set up right around 500 grains. I think they're about 515 grains. We're talking strictly weight here now. So you don't necessarily need to have like an entire swap of arrows for turkey. I mean, I think that's over the top if you do, or you've got enough money and time and to do that, that's fine. But um, I use the same arrows I do for deer hunting in the fall or elk hunting. I use these for elk hunting as well. And th that'll work fine. What you want to do is you want to make sure, then it's going to tie into our next point, is you are trying to get that arrow to stay in the bird. I like a lighter arrow, not because of speed, but because of that kinetic energy. When you have a lighter arrow, you have less kinetic energy, less kinetic energy, less of a chance of a pass through. And on that lighter arrow, we're also going with an expandable broadhead that actually opens from the front. That opens from the front because that will take some of that kinetic energy away as it hits the bird and then tries to pass through. So in the fall when I'm deer hunting, I usually use fixed broadheads. I, I, that's for the last few years, that's all I've used is fixed broadheads. But for turkeys, I like expandables or mechanicals because you get a wider cut, usually get less penetration, and I drop that broadhead weight down an extra 25 grain. So in the fall for deer, it's a solid broadhead or a fixed broadhead, 125 grain. In the spring turkeys, we're shooting 100 grain mechanical broadhead. And so point number three is the mechanical broadhead side of things. Some people don't use them. Take Derek for instance, I mean this hunt he did last year, I mean he smoked it, I think it was a G5, one of the G5 fixed blade broadheads. And he shot it twice, got the bird, perfect. But if you notice, if I remember this correctly, he shot that first time, complete pass through, and that bird was able to run away. And he had to get another shot just because that bird stopped. If he would have had an expandable or a light enough setup, 
where that arrow would have hit the bird and stayed in it, it wouldn't have been running that far. And you could have probably run, he probably could have run it down himself, especially being tall and lanky as he is. So why I like expandable broadheads is because it takes that energy away. And as this is what I've been using for the last, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 years are these wasp broadheads and they're the jackhammers. They fold backwards when they hit. So it, as that kinetic energy is going into that bird, it is drastically slowed down as these are being forced to fold backwards with the energy. So it has stuff to do with physics. It's been a while, so I, I get the concept, but I'm not gonna be a teacher to you guys about that. So when you're looking for your broadheads, that's what I would look for. If you're gonna switch up broadheads from what you do in deer season. And there's nothing wrong with using a fixed blade if that's what you wanna do, if that's what your setup is for the fall. What I would recommend doing is maybe dulling the edges of your uh, fixed broadhead, just to get that, um, slow that pass through up and hopefully keep that arrow in that bird and be able to retrieve it so much better and not be able to waste the animal. Keep the arrow in the bird if you can help it, just as better. Okay, so we've talked about those three things now. Three things about our gear. The bow, the arrows, and the broadheads. Three things I focus on. That's just is what it is. I don't care what your release is. I don't care what brand bow you have or brand arrows or brand broadheads. Whatever you want to run is fine as long as it's an ethical setup because what we should be paying attention to is the ethicalness of our hunt, making sure that this bird is taken efficiently and effectively. With that said, next thing, bird hunting in a pop-up blind is stupid simple. It, it, it takes so much difficulty out of the game. It's not even funny. Pop-up blinds are so simple, like this fall, um, during fall deer season, you can have fall turkey tags here in Michigan. So I had a couple tags and this one Tom came in. I'm sitting in a pop-up blind on a really small food plot, micro food plot. I'm in this pop-up blind with a um, iron wheel broadhead on my arrows and I don't want to shoot that at a turkey and I want to get my turkey arrow out with one of these jackhammers on it. So I'm no patience whatsoever in my movement. I'm looking at these birds and they're looking at me and I look at my arrows down there and I just reach down there and I grab an arrow and they're still looking, kind of going back to feeding. And then I grab and take my arrow off, making a little bit of noise and put my arrow on, pull back and shoot that sucker. So I'm pretty certain if you look up the science behind it, birds have a hard time per, um, with light perception when it goes from light to dark in a pop-up blind. And that's why pop-up blinds are so successful especially for turkey hunting with archery or a gun or whatever, because you have re you've taken a sense away from them almost. They can't smell, they've got uh, colored vision and they can see exceptionally well when things are in the open, in the light. And you take that vision away from being able to see into light, into dark. I mean, you've just, I mean, just almost quadrupled your success. I mean, you've almost just guaranteed your success. That's really what it is. As a person starting out in turkey hunting, wanting to do it with archery equipment, I would say, if you want to get some notches on your belt off the get, I would say to get a pop-up blind. And they're fairly inexpensive for the most part. Get the cheap one. It works just as good. So obviously there's more than one way to skin a cat. You could just throw all of what everything I just said right out the window. I know somebody will. And that's fine. But this is my, um, my suggestions to anybody that's looking to try and get into archery hunting with for turkey. Lighter poundage bow so you can hold it back longer. You're gonna have a lighter arrow if you're not using your deer hunting setup and you're going out to buy specific arrows for it. Just look for a lower grains per inch, but you still need your spine stiffness to match up and everything else, but a lighter grains per inch arrow. And then you're gonna use a mechanical broadhead, bow, arrow, broadheads, pop-up blind. If you're looking to have the most amount of success without blowing turkeys, get some notches in your belt on another pop-up blind and then make it more difficult for yourself if you want. So if you want to throw all this stuff I just said right out the window, go for it. I don't care, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. But if you want to have some success, I would maybe take a little bit of the information I've given you and use it, uh, at least a little bit. I appreciate y'all watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, hit that subscribe button, maybe that bell, thumbs up, whatever, share it with your buddies. Uh, the series should be continuing to pump out for the next couple weeks. Turkey season starts here in just over three weeks. So, and when three weeks hits, we'll be in the woods. And we'll hopefully be bringing you some good stuff then too. I'll see you guys later. Catch you on the flip side. I don't know if you can hear them.
I'm gonna go kill those chickens. They're layers, but they would taste just as good as anything else.